Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, in today's discussion, let's talk about our latest indicator, which is historical pattern matcher. To load this indicator, all you need to do is go to the indicators on the chat and uh, look for historical pattern matcher. And you can see that in the community scripts, you can see that um, with the author name Prendoscope, um, you can just load this indicator by clicking on this. I can also bookmark it at your favorite so that it will be um, it will come up in the top of the list and also you can look at the source code um, and if you are a programmer uh, you can go through the source code and study how it is working okay let me add this indicator oh it's already added so i will not add this again because um, it will add again then it will be a duplicate so i'll close this for now um, and then we already have the indicator on the chart you can see some drawings are already there so here Pattern doesn't mean any defined or any classical patterns or name patterns. So don't, um, you know, you, you cannot find things such as um, double bottom, triple bottom, or harmonic patterns or anything here. But, but what what is pattern here means any any price action which happens here is the pattern. For example, um, it's all based on zigzag and also like, as I said in many of the videos before as well, um, zigzag is the basic building block for any pattern recognition. So wherever zigzag goes, wherever the zigzag line goes, that makes the patterns. So here, this is a pattern. If you see this, the pattern is starting from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is a pattern, right? So let's see what are the settings. So it has six pivots here. If you look at this, there are six pivots. And after six pivots, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, so this is this is the sixth one, sorry. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the pattern. This is the first pattern where um, the projection of the next pivot is here, like the red line which, which you see here. That's the projection of the next uh, next um, you know next pivot. So as you see that the pivot actually have went very close to this, the next pivot. Uh, it's went very close to this one and then price retraced back and this is a confirmed pivot as you see that this is a confirmed pivot confirmed pivot because um this is um this pivot all has already passed and it will not change again but if you look at this one this is not a confirmed pivot right this is um this is still a last pivot is not always um not a confirmed pivot in zigzag so if price goes back down here this pivot will change to here right so this will keep moving so the so if as and when this point will keep moving uh, this will also keep moving this range also will keep moving but this range whatever we mentioned it's based on the confirmed pivot so it will not move um, it will not move further right so if you look at this here the last occurrence um you know it gives some details here so last occurrence of this pattern is on 15th june 2023 right so there are two patterns here just uh, don't get uh, you know confused about this so there are two patterns here one is the bearish one which starts from here to uh, here right one two three four five six and it retraces back here this is the outcome of the pattern right that's the uh, historical observation of the pattern is it can retrace from this range right and the second pattern is based on the unconfirmed pivot so that starts from here and it will go from it will go till here so that's a bullish pattern means uh, it ends in a bearish um, pivot so it is considered as bullish so um, the range for this particular pattern is this box right so this is the minimum and maximum range that's again based on the historical occurrences and how, mu how much it has retraced whenever this pattern happened historically and you can see that this pattern appeared last on um, 8th of july right so you can remember this this is the pattern one two three four five six so it went into um low and high, high, lower high lower low lower high and then higher low so this is the pattern which you're looking for and if you go back to this date let's say 8th of july so let's go back to this date so we are in august let's go back to 8th of july and you should be able to see um, a bullish pattern. Let's see, 8th of July. Yes, there it is. See this? Low, higher low, lower low. Um, no, not higher, lower high. And um, lower low, lower high. 
and higher low so this is the same pattern which you see there um, and how what happened to price afterwards you can see this uh, retracement here uh, the immediate rate may, but what we calculate is we'll not calculate all the way down what we calculate is only the immediate retracement what you see there is only the immediate retracement so um so immediate retracement maybe um this one here in this case it's just one uh near near to one so that because it started here it retraced back to one okay so similarly you see if you go further into june uh, you may find the bearish pattern as well i'll go back to this now again um so this bearish pattern right so this starts from here one two three four five six this bearish pattern you can probably see um if you go back to june 2023 june 15 2023 okay so that's how we represent the historical patterns here so you can see like you know whenever you identify a price action um, marked here you can just go back to history and see um what happened afterwards so if you're if you believe that you know price patterns are going to repeat yourself i know this can be a very valuable input for you to validate this kind of this claim or validate um, you know how many times it has happened before and all these things Okay, so uh, going further, there are a few other details on the, the screen. We can uh, explore that as well. So last occurrence, we already uh, looked, into, looked into it. What is last occurrence? And it just tells you the time and date of the last occurrence. We can go for a, go back in the history and find out what happened there. <clears throat> okay, so and coming further, uh, we have the thing called as max retracement and min retracement. So what it means is historically it happened uh, this kind of pattern happened 14 number of times where the price retraced the minimum retracement is 0 0.56 so if you see this this went up and then price retraced to 0 0.56 so this value here that put top of the box represents minimum retracement right and the maximum retracement is 3.8 so it means that it goes up and then um the retrace back to up to 3.8 times the value of this pivot so this is the maximum retracement as per what happened historically so it's not that it's going to happen yeah, the retracement is going to happen here but what we're presenting here is what happened in the history right so you can probably um if you believe that historical patterns um are going to occur again and again and uh, it's going to behave in a similar way then you can choose to follow the price um you know follow these patterns and find out where it are uh, interpret where it can um end or where it, where it can retrace back right and the median retracement there's another pattern another parameter here called as median retracement say we have 14 elements here we don't know at uh, how many patterns ended here 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 or here so it's possible that most of the patterns go here whereas just one pattern will reach here right and ex exactly this is exactly what happened here most of the patterns are uh, concentrated somewhere around here whereas the there's one or two which are to towards the end so that's why the median is median is very minimal like you know the median um, value if you look at this it's um 0 0.8 which is very close to 0 0.56 rather than 3.8 right so this in that way it will tell you like you know what is the probability average probability of retracement of uh, 50 percent of the times you know the price went back off before this point and more than 50 percent of the time it went here so you can also um probably i can um, um do one more thing you can actually put um percentile instead of median um we'll think about that like you know how do we um how do we enhance this further going forward right so you can probably uh, look for something like what happened for 80 percent of the time or what happened for 30 percent of the time like you know um, <clears throat> um such kind of a, a value or metric if you want to interpret um maybe we can take this forward as a feature enhancement right so we got minimum maximum median and number of occurrences right similarly if you look at the unconf unconfirmed pivot, so there too, um, we have the same things. We have uh, last occurrence, last retracement value, max, min, and median retracement, uh, and number of occurrences, right? So that's what the indicator does. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. So if you think, you know, it's um, you follow patterns or you think you want to understand uh, if the price, um, price actually 
goes up and down in patterns, then probably it's something um, something of a very good tool for you to study further. Um, as per settings, they're pretty simple. One is zigzag length. Um, There's always uh, any pattern recognition scripts, I'll have this one. So it identifies how the zigzag needs to be uh, drawn. So if you put a smaller length, um, the zigzag will be smaller, zigzag lengths will be smaller. And you may not get uh, real patterns or you may not get uh, very faulty patterns with this because um, number of, um, you know, number of candles traversing each pivots are pretty small here if you look at this. So, and you don't know, like if you see this 108 times it happened and the range is from um, 0 0.53 to 7.8 where most of them are concentrated below this range so you can you can use this but you know it will be very short term and you know by the time and also for confirming the pivot it may need one or two candles so by the time it would have already reached here so it is not that meaningful to uh, you know use lower lens so lower zigzag lens so if you use 13 or 21 let's say um 21 13 we already used by default. Yeah, you see that uh, 31 means it will cover more um, candles and you'll see a bigger patterns. Um, and hence, uh, you know, it may be more reliable to look at this data <clears throat> instead. Um, and then number of pivots. So the default is six, you can actually make it further. But if you make it higher number of uh, pivots to consider for a pattern, you may not find patterns all the time. For example, see there's no pattern here, but the last pattern happened somewhere around here. And if you see further, there's number of occurrences also only uh, two occurrences. So more pivots you include, the chance of the pattern happening becomes very less and less. So it may mean that you know you may you may not find the details um, of the data which you really love to see. Uh, because if there are two very less samples, uh, you know, it doesn't say anything. It's like, you know, two times it happened, first here and second time it were addressed here. So it means nothing. It means third time it may happen some other place. So instead, if you have 100 samples, then probably it's more easier to identify like, you know, okay, what's the probability of price at tracing um, till this point or this point or this point and all these things, right? Um, and then... If we set the number of pivots to less, then again, there'll be too many occurrences. Okay, max the minimum you can set is five, uh, set five. So five is okay. Um, but if you set three or two, what happens is um, the chance of this happening, this particular uh, pattern happening is almost common. Like, you know, it can happen once every two, three pivots. So this again won't give you exact um, outcome because it will give you too many uh, too many samples and it may not be related uh, tightly related to each other and all, right? So that's why you know choosing a right um, number of pivots for your pattern is important. I've kept six as optimal, like you know something optimal um, uh, optimal range, but you can experiment further on that. So 13 is the zigzag length, default zigzag length, and six is the default number of pivots, which I'm using in this um, indicator. So colors, pollution, bearish colors, um, just given it as a setting so that, you know, in case if you want to use different colors, um, you can make use of them as well. And that's all about this indicator. It's pretty simple, um, you know, and also, uh, very handy if you if you are interested in studying the patterns. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Bye.